Something very odd happened to me a few months back. I want to keep my identity secret, so I'll skip the name. But you should know I have a social media account. I'm just a normal person, with a job I've held for years. I used to share photos online now and then. But recently I began making these short videos. Reels, they call them. They're pretty popular nowadays. I made these videos for fun at first, and soon a few of them started to get lots of likes. My follower count shot up more than I ever imagined, so I kept at it. Before long, I had over 10,000 followers and really enjoyed making these videos. I posted them every day from wherever I was, work, home, you name it. It was about three months into this new hobby when the strange events of this story occurred. One morning, I checked my social media and saw a new message waiting for me. I received messages now and then, sometimes from viewers, other times from friends sharing stuff. This message was from a company I'd never heard of before, though they had a verified account and a good number of followers. They said they loved my videos and wanted to sponsor one. I was thrilled. I'd never even thought about earning money from my videos. I didn't know what they'd pay, but I was excited by any offer. They seemed legit and cool, so I replied showing my interest, and they promised to email me more details. They planned to send me some products to feature in a video. After exchanging emails and signing a contract with my details, they told me the products would arrive in about a week. For the next few days, I stuck to my usual routine. My work schedule was pretty regular. I usually started early and was back home by the afternoon. That particular week, on Thursday, I had a late start at 11 a.m., which meant I could sleep in, a rare treat since I usually had to be up by 7.30 a.m. I set my alarm for 9, but I didn't wake up to the alarm that day. Instead, I was jolted awake around 8.30 by the sound of breaking glass. Confused and scared, I sat up, listening closely. More noises followed, like someone forcing their way into my home. The sounds came from the front of the house near the dining area. My place isn't very large, so noises traveled easily. It was clear someone was inside. My heart pounded as I grabbed my phone to call 911. I could hear them moving around, not bothering to be quiet. There had to be at least two intruders. As I whispered into the phone to the emergency operator, detailing what was happening, the intruders continued to rummage through my house, oblivious or indifferent to the noise they were making. As I lay there, phone in hand, waiting for the police to arrive, the severity of the situation began to sink in. Luckily for me, it didn't seem like they were getting closer to where I was hiding. After I hung up with 911, the operator had told me the police would arrive soon. Meanwhile, I could still hear the intruders moving around the house. My nerves were on edge, fearing they might come toward my bedroom. Up to that moment, they had stayed in other parts of the house, but I was not sure how long that would last. I didn't have a lock on my bedroom door, and I didn't want to risk staying there unprotected. I decided to move to the bathroom next door. It had a lock, which made it a slightly safer place to wait. But this meant I had to open my bedroom door and close the bathroom door behind me without making any noise. I cautiously approached my bedroom door, opened it slowly and as quietly as I could. I tiptoed toward the bathroom, but just then, I heard footsteps approaching. In a panic, I hurried into the bathroom, shut the door a bit louder than intended, and locked it. Relief washed over me as I stood safely inside. The footsteps seemed to move away, and soon after I heard men's voices from the other end of the house. After a few more moments, the house fell silent as if they had left. I stayed in the bathroom, door locked, and waited. About five minutes later, the police arrived. I heard them knocking and cautiously stepped out to open the front door. The police entered and started to search my home. By then, the intruders were gone. They had smashed the back window that overlooked the yard from the dining room, and several of my belongings were missing. Although shaken, I was grateful to be unharmed but frustrated about the situation. I hoped the police would catch those responsible. What did all this have to do with Instagram? Initially, I didn't make any connection. But a few days passed, and nothing arrived in the mail. I went on Instagram to message the company about the expected products, but their account had disappeared, as if it had been deleted. Searching further, I found a different verified page for the company. Then it hit me. I had given my address in the contract for the sponsorship. If they had watched my posts, they could have known my work schedule and even recognized parts of my house. Moreover, 
I discovered that anyone could pay to get a page verified. It seemed like the sponsorship might have been a setup. I didn't know why or if it was just a strange coincidence, but I couldn't shake off the suspicion that it was all intentionally arranged. This happened to me in my second year of university. I was living in a small house with my roommate Jack. The university I attended was huge, with around 20,000 students. It was the first semester when this all started. One day I was scrolling through Instagram and noticed I had a new follower. Her name was Emily and her profile had the initials of my university and a future graduation year. She was also followed by a couple of people I knew from school, not close friends, but acquaintances. I guessed Emily must be a student at my university, so I followed her back. Her profile was simple. A few selfies and some photos of her cat. Nothing unusual. After that, I just moved on with my day. A few days later, I noticed that Emily had liked every single one of my photos. I had about 40 posts, stretching back to my high school days. It was flattering, but also a bit strange. I wondered if she might be interested in me. She didn't leave any comments or send any messages. Several days passed without further interaction. Then, one evening while Jack was studying in a university classroom, I was home alone. Around nine at night, I heard a knock. I was not expecting anyone and was confused about who it could be. I was in my room and didn't catch the first knock clearly. I stepped into the hallway and heard it again. This time, I realized the knocking came from the back door, not the front. This was unusual. I approached the back door and peeked through the window. There was a girl standing outside, Emily. I didn't recognize her immediately because I had only seen her through her online selfies. I'm pretty sure we had never met in person. As I watched, she tried to open the door herself. I hesitated, then opened the door slightly and greeted her. I asked what she was doing here. She asked if she could come inside. Something didn't feel right. Her showing up unannounced at my back door late at night was unsettling, especially since there was no way she should have known where I lived. I questioned her about how she found my house. She just asked to come inside once more. I really did not want her to enter, so I told her that I was very busy with schoolwork and needed to go back to it. She paused, looking upset, then mentioned she would leave and walked away, seeming angry. I felt relieved when she left, but mostly I was confused. After she went, I returned to my room and decided to block Emily on Instagram. Her showing up without telling me felt wrong. When Jack returned, I asked if he knew Emily. He said no. I showed him her picture, but he still didn't recognize her. I explained what had happened, and he was just as puzzled as me. I had hoped he might know her, or that maybe she had asked him for my address. But he didn't, which made the situation even weirder and scarier. The next night, I was working late on my assignments due at midnight. It was around 11.30 p.m., and I was nearly done when Jack called out from the living room. He was watching TV, and when I asked what he needed, he told me there was a girl at the front door. I immediately thought it was Emily. I walked to the living room and looked through the front door window. There she was, Emily, just standing there. But she didn't knock. She seemed to see me looking and then suddenly ran off. It was the most unsettling thing, just unsettling. I went back, finished my homework, and then sat with Jack in the living room. We kept checking the windows, half expecting her to return. Thankfully, she didn't appear again. After that night, I never saw her again. Months later, I asked Jack to check her Instagram. By then, Emily had posted more pictures and still seemed to be attending our university. I never understood her actions. They were deeply unsettling. My name is Anna, and this strange event began in the autumn of 2023. At that time, I was living alone in a small house in a quiet suburb, working at a nearby office. I also maintained a personal Instagram profile with a couple thousand followers. I wasn't well known, just a regular person who enjoyed sharing my life online. One evening, as I was getting ready for bed, I received a message from a close friend. It contained a link to an Instagram profile, along with a message, This isn't you, right? Curious, I clicked the link and was directed to a page that was pretending to be mine. However, it didn't use my real name. Instead, 
It had a completely different name. Shockingly, the account featured many photos that were unmistakably mine, although I had never shared them from this account. The profile had posted around 120 of my photos over the past several months. Most of these photos were the same ones I had already posted on my own Instagram. This fake account had gathered around 600 followers, and each photo received plenty of likes. It was unsettling to see how no one seemed to notice that this account was a complete imposter. As I browsed through the images, a chill ran down my spine. Among the familiar photos were several that I had never posted online. These were personal photos saved only on my phone, pictures from private moments of my life. The realization that someone had accessed these private images without my permission was horrifying. How had they obtained these photos? What else did they know about me? I quickly sent a message to the mysterious Instagram profile, asking who they were and why they were pretending to be me. Then, I reported the account. But shortly after sending the message, the profile blocked me. I shared what had happened with several friends, and they agreed to help by reporting the profile too. Within a few days, the Instagram team shut it down. I was relieved it was gone, but still troubled by the mystery of who was behind it. Only a few days after the account was closed, something even more unsettling happened. When I left my house one morning, I found a note taped to my front door. The note was written on plain paper, folded neatly. As I read it, a cold fear settled over me. The note was from the person who had created the fake Instagram page. They boasted about being able to access any information they wanted about me. They mocked me, saying I must think I'm very special because of my social media presence. Shaken, I rushed to the police station. I explained everything, showed them the note, and told them about the hacked Instagram account. The police took the note and started an investigation, but they warned me that these cases are tough to solve. Feeling vulnerable, I took immediate steps to secure my digital life. I created new accounts where necessary and changed all my passwords to something much stronger. Fortunately, my living arrangement was about to change, which gave me a small sense of relief. My lease was ending, and I moved to a different place a few weeks later. Since moving, nothing unusual has happened, but the fear of being watched or followed hasn't completely left me. I sometimes wonder if the perpetrator could be an old classmate harboring resentment, or perhaps a random stalker who chose me as their target. The uncertainty of not knowing who it was or what could have happened next still lingers in my mind. I'm a young woman who enjoys sharing moments of my life on Instagram, just like many others. I often post photos and love seeing the likes and comments they gather. Most reactions come from close friends, but not always. Like others, I sometimes deal with odd and unsettling messages from strangers. There are men who randomly like my photos, leave comments, or send me direct messages. Some are just too strange, and I find myself deleting them. But mostly, I just shrug it off as part of being online. However, something happened last summer that still sends shivers down my spine. I had posted a new photo on Instagram, and soon after, a man I didn't know liked and commented on it. He wrote, Very nice adding a fire emoji. His message seemed harmless at first. Shortly after, he sent a direct message simply saying hi. I wasn't interested and didn't reply. Curious, I checked his profile. He appeared much older, with only a handful of photos, none of which I recognized. We had no friends in common. I decided to ignore him, assuming he would get the hint. But he didn't stop. The next day, he messaged again, and over the following days, several more messages popped up from him. I ignored all of them, expecting him to eventually give up. However, his persistence didn't wane. Every day, amongst my notifications, there were new messages from him. One evening, feeling frustrated, I decided to block him, but first I wanted to see what he had been sending. As I scrolled through the messages, my heart stopped. Among the repetitive greetings, there was a photo he had sent. A photo of my house. Fear gripped me as I realized this was no ordinary follower. This man must be local, and alarmingly he knew where I lived. As I read his other messages, they grew more disturbing. Over and over he said hi, eventually stating outright that he knew my address. After blocking the man and sending a report to Instagram, I was left feeling unsure. Would this be enough to stop him? Despite my doubts, I decided against contacting the police. 
thinking they might not take my fears seriously. The day slowly turned into evening, and as the light faded, so did my sense of security. Living alone in a two-story house on the outskirts of a bustling city brought both freedom and fear. I spent the evening trying to distract myself by calling friends, but none were available to come over. As the house grew darker, I felt more isolated, with every small sound setting me on edge. Nothing unusual happened for a few hours, and I began to relax, hoping the man had moved on. By 10 p.m. I was settled on the sofa, watching a movie, trying to immerse myself in the story rather than my worries. My phone was quiet, no odd notifications popping up, which slightly eased my anxiety. However, during a quiet moment in the movie, a sudden urge to look outside gripped me. I paused the film, my heart thumping as I crept to the window. Peering through the blinds, I saw a car parked directly in front of my house, which I didn't recognize. The silhouette of a person in the driver's seat was barely visible. My mind raced. Was it him? Had he found a way to follow me despite my efforts? I quickly let the blind snap back into place, hoping the person hadn't seen my movement. Frozen on the spot, I listened intently. The sound of a car door opening and then shutting broke the silence of the night. With my heart in my throat, I dared to peek out again, just a sliver. I could see a figure stepping out of the car and walking toward my house. As the figure drew nearer, I recognized the build and the gate. It was definitely the man from Instagram. He approached with a steady pace, his steps audible as he moved closer to my front door. That night, I was overwhelmed with fear, hoping he wouldn't try to break into my house. I could hear his footsteps moving toward the back of the house, and that's when I decided it was time to call the police. With shaky hands, I grabbed my phone and dialed. I explained the situation in quick, urgent whispers while still sitting on the couch, not daring to move. For a few long minutes, everything was silent. I could not hear where the man was, and the suspense made my heart race. Suddenly, the sound of a car door opening and closing pierced the silence. Peering out the window, I hoped to see police cars, but instead, it was the man driving away. Although relieved he was gone, I knew the police would now have a harder time catching him. The police arrived about five minutes later. I described the man in his car as best as I could, though I hadn't gotten a clear view. I recounted everything to the officers, including the messages and the photo of my house. Unfortunately, after checking, I realized I had blocked his Instagram account, which seemed to have been deleted since it was no longer in my blocked list. The officers left after taking my statement, but my nerves were still on edge. Deciding I couldn't stay alone, I arranged to spend the next few days at a friend's house. That felt safer, knowing the man knew where I lived. However, the very next night, I received a direct message request on Instagram from a new anonymous account. It just read, user, followed by a string of numbers and had no profile picture. The message contained only one photo, a chilling view of my bedroom window taken from outside in the yard. My blood ran cold, realizing that he must have taken this while lurking around my house. I showed the photo to my friend, and we reported it to the police immediately. Unfortunately, there wasn't much identifiable information on the account. The police promised to investigate further. After several quiet days, I decided it was time to return home. In the bright morning light, I felt a bit braver. But as I drove up to my house, my heart sank. The back door window was shattered. Terrified he might still be inside, I didn't even step out of my car instead calling the police right from the driveway. The police were quick to respond. They entered my house cautiously, and after what felt like an eternity, they emerged with the man in custody. He had been hiding inside, possibly waiting for me to return. Relief washed over me as they led him away. The ordeal was finally over, but the terror of those days would haunt me forever. I was safe for now, but I knew this experience would linger in my memory a stark reminder of the vulnerability that came with sharing one's life online. I often spend time looking at funny pictures and news on the internet. I'm a 22-year-old guy, and last year, during my final days at university, I was relaxing in my dorm room, watching videos on YouTube on my phone. Suddenly, I got a notification from Instagram. It was a follow request from a girl named Emma. Her profile was set to private, and her profile picture showed her at a sports event, cheering happily. 
From that single image, she seemed like a fun-loving person. Her bio mentioned she attended a big university not too far from mine. She had a decent number of followers, around 1,000, and followed about 400 people with 100 posts up. I didn't know her, but she seemed interesting, so I accepted her request and asked to follow her back. After that I went back to watching my video. The next day I checked Instagram again to see if Emma had accepted my follow request. Surprisingly, she hadn't. Instead she declined it but continued following me. I found this strange and a bit disappointing but didn't think much of it. However, things started getting weirder the following day. Emma liked an old photo of mine, one that I posted four years ago. It was clear she had scrolled through my profile. Thinking it might have been a mistake, I requested to follow her again. An hour later, she had declined once more. I was confused, but decided to drop the issue and move on. Not long after, eerie things began to happen. I lived in a small two-bedroom house just off campus, sharing it with my roommate, Tom. One morning, Tom mentioned that the previous night, he thought he saw someone darting through our backyard. Over the next few days, we kept hearing odd noises outside and sometimes, they seemed to come from inside our house. One terrifying night, I was jolted awake by a loud rattling noise at my window. I jumped out of bed and quickly turned on the light. As soon as I did, the rattling noise stopped. Heart pounding, I rushed to my window and peered out into the darkness. I caught a glimpse of a man running away. He glanced back at me for just a moment. It was too dark to see clearly, but he was definitely an adult man. Alarmed, I woke Tom and we both sat up for the rest of the night, trying to decide what to do. We chose not to call the police, thinking maybe it was just a one-time scare. The following day, with the night's fear still fresh, I found myself aimlessly scrolling through Instagram again. My thoughts drifted back to Emma. Curious, I went to check her profile once more, but this time, it was gone. Deleted. I started to think that maybe the person who followed me wasn't Emma at all, but a man pretending to be her. It explained why he had declined my follow requests. I couldn't be sure, but the timing of everything made it seem too much of a coincidence. Trying to shake off the unease, I attempted to focus on other things. However, that night, as I tried to sleep, the sound of gravel crunching underfoot outside brought me back to alertness. Tom heard it too. We looked at each other in the dim light, fear etched on our faces. We decided it was time to do something. The next morning we talked about installing a camera outside to see if we could catch whoever was lurking around our house. We spent the day setting up the camera, hoping it would give us some answers. As evening fell, we tested the camera and made sure it covered the backyard and the area around my window. Feeling slightly more secure, we tried to get some rest, but the sense of being watched was hard to shake off. We left the lights on and kept our phones close just in case. The camera was supposed to help us feel safer, but instead, it added to our anxiety. Every small noise made us jump, wondering if it was just the wind or if someone was really out there, watching us, waiting. We didn't know what was coming next, but we knew we had to be ready. I often spend time on Instagram. It's a favorite app on my phone. I don't post much myself, I mostly enjoy watching videos and seeing pictures others share. But something weird occurred a few months back, and I still can't make sense of it. Originally, my profile was open for anyone to see. I had around 200 followers and followed about 300 people, not a lot by most standards. My own profile had just three posts, all quite old and rather dull. I rarely ever commented on other people's posts, unless it was a close friend's. So it was a total shock when, one morning, I noticed 50 new notifications on Instagram. Confused, I opened the app and saw that my old photos were suddenly flooded with comments. But these weren't nice comments. They were harsh and hurtful. People called me ugly, a horrible person, among other awful things. Despite the surge in comments, my follower count hadn't changed. I checked some of the profiles leaving these comments. They appeared normal, all private and none were familiar to me. As I browsed, more notifications popped up. This time they were direct messages, each one as mean as the comments. I replied to one, asking why they were sending these messages. The chilling reply was simply, 
you should know. I racked my brain for any reason why this was happening. I hadn't changed anything recently, and I was always kind to everyone. The negativity was bewildering. The hateful messages didn't stop. They came at me through comments and direct messages, one after another. Finally, overwhelmed, I decided to delete my account. A week later, I cautiously set up a new account. Since then, things have been normal again. But the mystery still haunts me. Who were those people? Why were they so angry with me? I had done nothing wrong, as far as I knew. The thought lingered in my mind, a dark cloud over my daily scrolls through the app. I'm just a normal guy, and I like using the social media app Instagram. I check it every day to see what my friends are up to, and to keep up with my favorite sports. I often browse the Explore page, where Instagram shows random posts from accounts you don't follow based on what you might like. Each time you open Instagram, the Explore page is different. It was a regular evening, maybe a week or so ago, when I first noticed the same photo pop up twice on the Explore page. At first, it seemed like nothing. Just a small glitch, maybe. But then I saw it again, and again. This same photo kept appearing, no matter how many times I refreshed the page. I didn't think much of it at first, just an odd repeat. But the repetition started to feel eerie. The photo was simple. A grey four-door sedan parked somewhere nondescript. It looked utterly ordinary, neither new nor old. Oddly, the photo didn't show how many likes it had, and there were no comments under it. Driven by curiosity, I finally clicked on the profile. The profile name was a jumble of letters and numbers, and its profile picture was the same grey car. It had just a handful of followers. There were only four photos posted, each of different cars in various locations. Two parked by the roadside, one in a driveway, and another in a parking lot. None of the cars stood out. They seemed like they could belong to anyone. But as I scrolled through these mundane car photos, my heart skipped a beat when I recognized the background in one of them. It was my house. The car in the driveway was not just the same make and model as mine. It was my car. I zoomed in, my fingers trembling. There was no mistaking it. That was definitely my driveway. And that was definitely my car. I felt a cold rush of fear. Who was running this account? Why were they taking photos of my car and posting them on this obscure Instagram profile? I shared the photo with a few friends, hoping someone would tell me it was just a prank, but no one knew anything. Each photo on the page was void of captions or any hint of the photographer's intent. The mystery deepened, and the unsettling feeling grew as I pondered the implications. Was someone stalking me? Watching my movements? My friends agreed it was very strange, but none of them could guess who might do such a thing or why. Out of curiosity, I considered leaving a comment or sending a message to the mysterious profile, but in the end, I chose not to. The next day, I went back on Instagram. The same picture of my car appeared again on the Explore page. I tapped on it, and it was the same photo as before. I noticed that the account had posted a story, so I clicked on it. The story featured a poll with the question, which one? And options labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. I didn't vote because it didn't make any sense to me. The whole situation felt too weird, and I decided it was best to just ignore it. I logged off Instagram and stayed home for the rest of the day, uneasy but trying to distract myself. That night I went to bed with a heavy feeling. The next morning I got ready for work as usual. However, when I stepped outside, my heart sank. My car was gone. In a flash, all those odd posts came rushing back to me. I called the police immediately and then informed my boss about what had happened. She was understanding and told me I could start work late after handling things with the police. I explained everything to the officers, including the weird Instagram account. But when I tried to show them, I discovered that the account had been deleted. The police did what they could, taking all the details and promising to search for my car. I took a ride-sharing service to work and later arranged a rental car through my insurance. The next few days were filled with constant worry and confusion, but eventually, the police called me. They had found my car abandoned on the side of a road about 20 miles away. Thankfully, it was undamaged and I was able to get it back. However, the police never figured out who was behind the Instagram account or why they targeted me. That poll, 
Was it a way for someone to choose which car to steal? Why would someone post such things on Instagram in the first place? The whole experience left me with more questions than answers. I just hope nothing like this ever happens again. The fear and uncertainty of those days still linger whenever I use social media or hear a car similar to mine pass by. This is a scary story that happened to me not too long ago. First, let me say that I am a woman, and this took place in a big city park I was passing through after leaving my job. This park is quite vast and usually has many people around because of its location in the heart of a bustling city. However, that day, as I was walking, I started to feel uneasy when I noticed a man trailing behind me. I first saw him when I paused to check my phone, and he was lingering nearby, seemingly doing nothing. As I resumed walking, he did the same. I quickly crossed the park and reached the busy streets of the city. While waiting to cross a road, I caught him nearby again, stealing glances at me every time I looked in his direction. Although I wasn't sure he was really following me, I couldn't shake off the suspicion. It took me about 10 more minutes to reach my apartment building. I kept checking over my shoulder as I walked, and each time, he was still there, not too far behind. Nothing like this had ever happened to me before, and it was truly frightening. When I finally got to my apartment building, he was about 20 feet away. I hurried inside, locked the door quickly behind me, and he did not come in. Whether he tried to or just walked past, I couldn't tell. I tried to forget his face, hoping never to see him again. Later that evening, my phone buzzed with a notification. A new follower on Instagram. When I opened the app, my heart sank. It was him, the same man from the park. I couldn't understand how he had found my name or my profile. Immediately I blocked him, feeling a deep sense of fear about how easily he had tracked me down. The next night, as I was settling down in my apartment, another notification popped up. It was from Instagram again, and unbelievably, it was him following my second account. On my second Instagram, I shared things that weren't so important, only with my very close friends. This account was locked so that only people I approved could see what I posted. It didn't even have my real name, and I didn't connect it to my main account. So, when I saw that he had found this private profile too and was asking to follow me, I was really scared. I blocked him there as well. Just half an hour after blocking him, there was a loud knock at my door. Feeling a chill down my spine, I tiptoed to the door and peeked through the peephole. There he was, the same man standing right outside. He had somehow figured out not only where I lived but exactly which apartment was mine. I was frozen with fear and didn't open the door. He knocked again, harder this time. Despite my fear, I stayed quiet and watched. He didn't go away, instead he just stood there, sometimes walking a few steps away then coming back, as if waiting for me to let him in. I grabbed my phone and called the police, never taking my eyes off him. He continued to linger there, pacing slightly but always returning to my door. It felt like an eternity, but the police arrived after about 10 minutes. He was still there when they showed up. I overheard them talking to him through my door. He told them he got the wrong place, pretending to be confused and saying he was just looking for his friend Jason. But it was clear to everyone he wasn't being truthful. The police didn't seem to buy his story, but they only warned him to leave and not to come back. After the officers had talked to him, they spoke with me. I explained everything from the park to the Instagram followings. They advised me to call them if he ever showed up again. Thankfully, that was the last time I saw him. He never returned. That whole experience left me shaken. I couldn't shake off how creepy it was, how he could find out so much about me and just appear at my door. It was a terrifying reminder of how careful you need to be about who might be watching. This event took place last year. I am a woman living by myself in an apartment complex. I have a Facebook profile where I often share photos. Generally, I post something new every few weeks. Sharing photos on Facebook is enjoyable for me, although sometimes you encounter fake accounts or unsettling people. Up until then, I hadn't really faced any serious issues. But then, something chilling occurred. One morning, I logged into Facebook and noticed a new message. It came from a man who followed my account, someone named Mike, 
whom I did not recognize and hadn't followed back. I couldn't tell how long he had been looking at my page, but his message was an invitation to meet and spend time together. His message struck me as odd, and I chose not to reply. After all, we had never spoken before, and it was strange for him to expect me to accept his invitation just like that. Plus, from his profile picture, he didn't seem like someone I'd want to meet. I assumed that would be the end of it. However, the very next day, he sent another message. He repeated his request to meet up and even offered to pick me up. This time, I politely declined, hoping he would understand I wasn't interested. Nevertheless, Mike persisted. He tried persuading me again, but I continued to ignore him. I couldn't fathom why he kept sending these messages without any prior interaction. It seemed he stopped after that, as I received no further messages the next day. I thought maybe he had finally given up. The night after, I went to the supermarket in the evening after finishing work. I shop from time to time, but I don't stick to a specific schedule. I spend about half an hour picking out groceries. It was nearing 8.30 p.m. by the time I was ready to leave. The store had calmed down, with only a handful of shoppers around. When I reached my car in the dimly lit parking lot, I noticed a vehicle parked unusually close to mine. I was just finishing loading my shopping bags into the car when the door of the vehicle next to mine swung open. A man stepped out. At first glance, he seemed like just another shopper, but instead of heading to the store, he came directly towards me. Initially, I was puzzled, but then he called out my name and questioned why I had been ignoring his messages. It dawned on me that it was the same Mike from Facebook, whom I recognized from his profile picture. Confusion silenced me for a moment before I managed to ask what he was doing here and how he knew I would be at the store. He claimed it was just a coincidence. I hurried to put the last of my groceries away, telling him I needed to get home. After slamming my trunk shut, I tried to bypass him to get to my driver's door, but he grabbed my arm, insisting I should go with him. I pleaded with him to let go, telling him he was hurting me, but he only tightened his grip and started dragging me towards his car. Realizing he was much stronger, I started screaming for help at the top of my lungs, hoping to catch the attention of anyone nearby. Thankfully, there were a few other shoppers in the parking lot who noticed the commotion. When Mike saw them looking, he abruptly released me and hissed for me to be quiet. I took the chance to dash around my car, yanked open the driver's door, and jumped inside, locking it just as Mike tried to follow. I started the car quickly and drove away from the parking lot before Mike could even return to his car. He tried to follow, but I was already speeding off. I drove to another nearby store out of his view then zigzagged through various streets in a residential area to make sure he wasn't following me. Only when I felt safe did I head home. It took me a while to calm down enough to remember to call the police. I explained everything that had happened, but by the time I checked Facebook again, Mike's account had disappeared. I think he deleted it. After that terrifying night, I never encountered Mike again, but the fear of that encounter lingered for a long time. I'm a college student and I like to share my life on Instagram. I've been using it for a while and sometimes I get messages from people who make me uncomfortable. Usually, I just ignore these messages. A little while back, I posted a new picture that got a lot of attention, mostly from my friends. But among the comments, there was one from a man I didn't know. His name was Mark and his username was just Mark, followed by a random string of numbers. His profile picture was blurry, but he looked much older than me. He left a lot of heart emojis, which felt weird to me. I usually don't mind much since I get odd comments now and then, but then he commented on two more of my photos a few days later. In one comment, he called me beautiful, and in another, he said he wanted to meet me. I thought the best thing to do was to ignore him, hoping he would go away if I didn't respond. But ignoring him didn't work. He sent me a direct message soon after. When I opened it, he wrote that he found me attractive and asked if we could meet. I didn't reply and hoped he would stop messaging me, but he didn't take the hint. The next day, he bombarded me with messages, about five in just ten minutes. I still didn't respond. I decided it was time to block him. Since my Instagram profile was public, it didn't take him long to notice. Within hours, he created another account and followed me again. His messages changed. They weren't friendly anymore. He was angry that I had blocked him and threatened to find me. 
I blocked him once more, telling myself he was probably just trying to scare me. But the following day he reached out again from a new account. This time his message was chilling. He said he was now in the same state as me and even mentioned the city I live in. When I read his message saying he had seen me before, I became really scared. It seemed like this man didn't just find me by chance on Instagram, he must have known me in real life. I couldn't figure out where he might have seen me. I was studying at a big college close to a major city, and I also worked at a busy restaurant. There were too many places where our paths could have crossed. I decided to report his profile to Instagram, explaining everything he had done in a message to them. I wasn't sure if it would help, but I also wasn't sure if this was serious enough to involve the police. For a day or two, I heard nothing from him, which made me feel a bit relieved. But just as I was starting to relax, he contacted me again. He had created another account, and this time, his message was terrifying. He said he was on his way to my house. At first I didn't believe he would actually come, but then I saw a car pull up outside my apartment. I lived alone in a small one-bedroom place that was right next to the parking lot. It was easy to notice when someone parked directly in front of my apartment. An older man got out of the car, and he looked just like the man in the profile picture. He started walking toward my building. I was sure he was coming to my apartment. Panicking, I quickly pulled my shades down and rushed to my bedroom. I hid in my closet and dialed the police. While I was on the phone with them, I could hear knocking on my front door. My phone kept lighting up with Instagram notifications, more messages from him. I stayed hidden in the closet, trembling, waiting for the police to arrive. The police got there just in time. They found the man trying to break into my front window. They arrested him, and I was safe but the whole experience left me deeply shaken. I knew I wouldn't have to worry about him anymore, but the fear lingered.